Stella was at the top of a tall ladder, leaning against the side of a disused building in the city centre. She was just putting the finishing touches to a vast mural, a countryside scene filled with animals and wildlife. She was painting the red eye of the eagle owl that sat on the branch of an oak tree and on the same branch looking back was a sparrow as if it was wary of being eaten by the fierce beak of the owl. As she painted, a man on a disability scooter came along the pavement and he called up to her, Watch out, it doesn't get you! And as she was laughing back down at him, he wasn't looking where he was going. And his scooter clipped the base of her ladder and it slipped from beneath her. And she began to fall, almost as if she was in slow motion. She braced herself for the crunch of bone against pavement. But instead, she fell into softness. She fell into soft leads. She realised she'd fallen into her own painting. She looked back towards the wall and she could see the, the man with his hand against it, looking through anxiously at her and she moved towards him and she, she put her hand up against his as if to grab his hand to be pulled out. But there was a pain, what seemed like a pain of glass between them, like cloudy glass, and she couldn't get through. Who, who, who are you? It was the owl. Uh, I'm Stella. What, 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 what are you? Said the sparrow. I suppose I'm a human. Can't be human, can't be human. Humans have been extinct for centuries, can't be human. Said the sparrow. You must be lying, said the owl. But, but if you're not, you must come with us. And this owl swept up into the sky, swooped round behind Stella and began to wrangle her with screeches and cries deeper into her own painting. Soon the road and the man and the pavement were left behind and they penetrated along the passageway of the path by the river that she painted and into the woods deeper and deeper until they came to a glade. And in the middle of the glade was a gnarled old yew tree. Oh, oh, called the owl. And as he called, more and more animals began to appear from among the trees and from the sky. Birds from large right down to the tiniest and from mammals from the tiniest shoe right up to the great vicious bear that stood with his back against the tree scratching himself. Looks like a big chimp, he said. Chimp, chimp, yes, chimp's a thing, said the sparrow. Chimp, 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 can't be human, human's extinct, chimp, chimp. Stella looked round and she saw feathers sticking out of the corner of the owl's mouth. You only exist in our stories, said a voice behind her. And Stella turned round, and on one of the branches of the yew tree was a tiny gold crest. And in all our stories, you were bad. You are the bogies that we frighten our children with to make them behave. But it seems you have survived. You are not extinct. I could make it extinct said a wolf, licking its lips. Give her a quest, said a buzzard with a mouse in its mouth. Yeah, quest! Quest, 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 said all the other animals in the glade, and the, rot, the, the gold crest replied. Very well. I see you are a painter. You must paint yourself 
into our picture in a way that you feel you belong. Again, the owl was given the task of wrangling Stella, and this time he led her deep into the woods, into the darkness, and then into the glades and the tangled brambles and the ferns where she fell and was scratched as they passed through for hours and hours until finally they reached the edge of the forest and came into the foothills of the mountains. Bugger this, said the owl, landing on Stella's shoulder, his sharp claws digging into her. Go there, he said, and he pointed up at a large outcrop halfway up the mountain. And without saying another word, he took off and silently flew back in the direction they'd come. It took Stella another two, three hours of clambering and sliding, bruised, battered, and finally she arrived at the outcrop halfway up the mountain. And as she circled round it, she realised why she'd been sent there, for behind it there was an entrance to a cave. When she walked into it, the darkness enveloped her like velvet, so that she couldn't see the hand in front of her face, but what she could see was light coming through a small gap in the roof at the back of the cave wall. And the streak lit the very back of the cave. So she headed towards the light, stumbling over whatever it was on the ground, rocks, bones, and as she approached the back of the cave, now she could see that the light was illuminating animals, aurochs, bison, deer, charging, dancing. In the diffused light that was coming through the entrance. So she thought, how, how, how do, how do they get up there to paint that? And she put out her hand, and instead of feeling a ladder like hers, she could feel the rough stones of a platform that she began to climb. And the platform had large rocks at the bottom and smaller ones and smaller ones. And she climbed and she climbed and she scrambled and she, she slipped. But eventually, trembling, she managed to reach the top where there was a small wobbly platform. And there she knelt in awe of the understated beauty of the animal paintings. And she took her paintbrush out and she painted herself into the painting. A little stick, Stella, to one side, looking at the animals. And in the diffused light, she saw that she too was dancing. Oh, wow, she said, but her cry woke up some of the other inhabitants of the cave. Above her, there were bats roosting and they began to swirl and swoop around her and she flapped at them with her arm. But in so doing, she unbalanced and again she began to fall and fall and fall. And this time the landing was hard. When she awoke, she looked up and she saw the face of a small child and the small child was holding a spear with a stone head an inch away from her throat. You not me! I kill not you! said the child. I, 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 I hear, I, I hear, and you, I, I there! Stella pointed up to the painting that she's just painted. And sure enough, there were the bison and the deer and the auroch, and she was beside them, dancing. She smiled at the child, and slowly the child smiled back at her and moved the spear away from Stella's throat and put it down on the ground. You paint! I show more. And she grabbed Stella's hand and with, with a strange strength pulled her up and led her 
to the back of the cave into a passageway that wound through, 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 through past stalactites and stalactites and bones of animals and humans until finally they came to a small cave that seemed to be lit by preternatural light. And at the back of the cave, on the cave wall, hands outlines of hands, children's hands, women's hands, men's hands, older, more ancient, even than the painting that she'd seen before. Stella took the child's hand and put it against the wall and she took out her paint. And like a teacher, a playgroup painted round the child's hand, and then she did her own. And as they stood there with their hands against the wall, they saw through the wall faces peering back at them from a time before, giggling, laughing, looking back at them. Slowly, the images of these people faded and Stella and the child sat down, gasping, leaning back against the cave wall. The child took out a pouch that she'd had round her neck and handed a handful of berries and grubs to Stella. And while Stella chewed on them, trying not to vomit, the child said, They eat here. And she pointed at the ground where there were bones of animals and little bits of flint and rock. And she, she picked one of them up. It had a bulbous end at one end. But at the other, someone had cracked off shards to make a crude point. Cut! 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 said the child. Rah! This huge sound of a cave lion echoed down the passageways into the cave where they sat. The colour drained from the child's face. I, I, I go, I go, you stay. And she picked up her little spear and before Stella could say anything had disappeared into the darkness down through the passageways. The sounds were terrible. The roars of the lion, the cries and shouts of the child. Who had won? Who had lived? Who had died? The answer came soon when the outline of the lion appeared at the entrance to the cave and it came bounding, bounding across the cave towards Stella. But just as it reached her, it stopped. Why are you? And then it leapt. It sank its teeth into Stella's shoulder and she fell to the ground, her arms falling out and, and she flailed around and she found that she grabbed the tool that the child had just shown her and she tried to stab and lash at the lion but the lion was too heavy for her. And just, just as it was about to sink its teeth into her again, she looked up at the wall and she could see anxious faces looking back at her and reached out. She reached, reached, put her hand against the wall and this time a hand met hers and she felt flesh, flesh against flesh. And again... She began to fall back, back, back onto the pavement, under the mural, anxious faces of passers-by looking down at her, a sharp pain in her shoulder where she'd fallen, and in her hand, not a paintbrush, but another tool, a stone tall, bulbous at one end, sharpened into a point. Maybe a knife. 
maybe even a dagger. <laughs>